Hello and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My name is Shimonmi Joseph and my email is shopopolos at gmail.com. So if you have any questions about Linux and getting Linux jobs, please send me an email and I will respond to your email. In today's presentation, I will be talking about uh, question number two. Um, Again, if you're preparing for the uh, like RHCT exam, this is what you will be encountering. And these are the kinds of questions that you'll be encountering. And um, if you're going for interviews, these are the kinds of questions they will be asking you on the interviews. The interviewers will need to know that you know these things before they are able to give you the job. So today we're talking about Linux basics. And um, let's go to the practice. These are the videos you can watch if you're trying to learn about this. But for today, we're doing the practice and uh, I'll be providing solutions on some of the questions. So let's click on this. And um, we did question one previously. Now we're going to be doing the question number two. And I'm just going to read out the question very quickly, but you can take time. You can go to linuxjobber.com and read the question number two. And um, you can see it yourself. So create group user, create group my users, add new users. Matt, Kim, Kerry, and Jason to the group, my users. Set password for all users and ensure it expires every 60 days. All users must change their passwords at next login. Create new groups, group called sales, with group ID of 315. Add Jason and Matt to sales. Create new group called web, with group ID of 316. Add Kim and Kerry to web. Create user my app and make sure his account is not interactive. So that's the question, and let's get, get started solving it. So to create group my users, here's how you create the group. They didn't ask us to specify a group ID, so we're just going to say group add, and we're going to create group add my users. This is easy enough my users and um, that's done this will probably earn you one point on a typical exam uh, each point on a typical exam is equivalent to two points on the RHC SA Red Hat uh, system certified system administrators exam so um, this will end this that will pro this will probably earn you about one point so now we have to add the users so let's go ahead and add all the users very quickly so we have we already have user Jason, so we just have to create users Matt, Kim, and Carrie, and then add them to this group according to the questions um, demand. So let's add use the command user add Matt. You can specify now because the question says to add Matt to sales, it's better to create the user uh, the group sales first so that we can um, kill two birds with one stone. We can create the user mat and add them to sales at the same time. So now let's do two of them together. So instead of adding the user mat, let's just create the group sales right now. So now we create the sales you can see that it's 315 this is the group ID right and the group password is still protected so um, now we can create the user mats but the 
question says to add in to the group sales it doesn't say anything about um, home directory or any other thing so um, let's just leave it that way um, not specify the shell so this is done and then this question says to also um, add JSON to to this new group sales so but JSON already exists so that we can't use the user add command we have to use the user mod command which would um, um, we have to use the big G option this big G which means in addition to <coughs> in addition to JSON's group it's also going to be part of the sales group if you don't put if you use the small G it will wipe out JSON's group let's, let's take a look at JSON's group first ID JSON, right? And you can see that JSON is JSON already has a group that we set when we did the first the question number one, and is part of the admin group. If we just do, if we just add use a small G and add JSON, JSON will end up <coughs> leaving the this group. It's not going to be part of admin anymore, and the effect of that is that it's going to have problems um, doing things that the uh, the admin is. Um, meant to do so it's better to um, specify to use the option it's better to use the option um, big G so that we're appending to the group of um, of Jason's group so now user mode AG sales and then we add Jason and if you look at Jason now ID JSON, you can see that his primary group is still there, which is the 601, but in addition to that, it's part of sales now, which is 315. <coughs> Otherwise, there will be problems. So now, the next group it says to create, uh, we're going to use group add again, and it says 316, 316, web. That's what the question says. So now we're gonna have to add user carry and game. We're gonna create them and add them to this group. So let's use um, user add dash g, which is their primary group now, 316. Or we can just put web in there, it doesn't matter. Um 316 um carry. And if we do that, it will automatically add, create the user carry, and add the user to this group. We have to do the same thing for the user Kim. And all these questions, all these uh, things we have done, the group add, the user add, will probably just be one point on the typical exam, and two points each on the Red Hat Certified System Administrator's exam. So. This is what you're going to get. So you probably have scored uh, about five points already on most exams and on the Red Hat certified exams. <coughs> you probably have scored about 10 points if you've done all of this correctly. Now let's take a look at the question and um, see what, what else we have to do. So now we have to go set the password for all these users and ensure that it expires every 60 days and that all users must change their passwords at next logon. Also, we have to create user my app and make sure his account is not interactive. Now, let's do that one first so that when we go to use the different command, we don't go back and forth on command. So, first, we create the user. We create the user my app. My app. Let me, let me make sure I spelled that correctly. Create user my app sure his account is not interactive now we have what it says to do user my app and this account is is interactive right now but we want to make sure it's not interactive so the way to make an account non-interactive is to make sure that the account cannot log in from the from shell it has no shell so it can't log in so we're going to say the shell is being no login no login and um, when we do 
this now this account is not interactive so if we try to clear, let me clear the screen first okay so if we try to um log in as that user so let's just try to sue as that user and what this is typically used for is for applications so the application is not supposed to have a login shell it's not supposed to be able to log in into the machine but also uh, but at the same time it must have a user account so that uh, it can run uh, applications so typically um, administrators will create a user called my app or some other name like Oracle and that user will run applications but that user should not be able to log in so in this case now if we try to log in as that user you see what it says being sue, sue says being no login no such file or directory so this person is not allowed to log in it's just um, a an application account so now let's go and take care of the other question where it says um it's going to set password for all the users that can log in and make sure they expire they are, and make sure it expires so the password has to expire in 60 days and all users must change their password and next login now let's take care of that very quickly this question this particular part of the question and you about two points each um that's four points altogether for the two which is this 60 days and next login two points each which is four points and on a typical uh, red hat certified system administrators exam will earn you eight points which is double so let's take care of that very quickly. All right. So the the command that we're going to be using for changing password um, is called change change. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, G C H A G E change. Um, this is what you have to be very familiar with this command because if you have users other than yourself on a machine, or if you're administering users, you're going to need this command uh, very often because. Um, to reset passwords, you need to change um, password, um, set uh, reset dates and uh, expiration dates for accounts and all kinds of things. So you have to familiarize yourself very much with this command. This doesn't get asked very much on um, interviews because um, I guess interviewers don't use this themselves. The um, the administrators are using this, but as an administrator, you will definitely need this command. So get familiarized with it. So I'm gonna just look at um, right now let's pick one of our users Kim again let's check Kim as you can see um, this is what it says number of days between password change the, ma the minimum is zero the maximum is nine which means that they don't even have to change their passwords now um, but we want them to change their password at the minimum every 60 days. So we're going to, um, we're going to set this to 60 and, um, also password expires never. Um, we have to make sure that the password, um, we're going to set the last password change to zero just so that, um, next time they try to put in their password we will ask them um, to enter a new password so before we do all of this first we have to give all our users password so I'm gonna give all these users um, password so here's what here's the way that I'll do it I'll say password for Kim and then it tells me to enter my password and um, again this is just for uh, for example uh, if you do a password that it doesn't like, it will tell you that pa bad password, it is too short. So you have to make your password a little complex. But again, just because this is an example, uh, I'm going to use a short password anyway. This, are just, this is just for test. So I'm going to retype the same password. But you should make you should make sure your passwords are strong enough uh, so that hackers can, can use them. So um, this is how to do it. But for the other users, I'm not going to spend so much time working. This. I'm going to use uh, a script to put it in. You know what? Let me just do it very quickly. Great. 
Alright, so all our users have their passwords now. So let's just take a look at um, let's pick one user, just look at what they have. Uh, let's look at Jason this time. And um, again, if you look at it, um, it's pretty much the same. Oh, yeah, I did say before that um, maximum number of days means that they will never be, they will never, they don't, they will never be changing their password. No. Actually, that's the minimum number of days, which means that they can change their passwords anytime. Um, they don't have to ever change their password. But the maximum number of days is what we actually need, which means that if you set this to one, that means every day they will have to come back and change their password. So let's let's see. Let's do that very quickly for this user. Change dash D zero uh, for Jason. So when we Look at this for Jason. It says password must be changed. So the next time Jason logs in, um, you're gonna have to he's gonna have to change his password. So that's the first task that the question asks us. So now we're gonna do everything for we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of the people. So we're gonna do this for Kim also. Carry also, and then we'll do the same thing for Matt. So, whenever next any one of them logs in, they'll be required to change their password. Now we have to set the, the number of days between their passwords change. So, every 60 days, we want them to change their password, which means that the maximum number of days between password change. So, they can't exceed, exceed 60 days. So, any within the 60 day period, they have to change their password. So now let's take a look, let's see how to do that, we're going to do change dash M, M for maximum, if we do the small M, which is the minimum, but we don't want to do that, which means that they will not be, if we do minimum for 60 days, that will mean that within 60 days, they're not allowed to change their password, they have to change their password after 60 days, but we're going to do maximum, which means that inside the 60 days, they have to change their password. And anything after that, they will have to come and change their password before they can use their account. So, we're going to make that 60. For Let's start with Jason. And then let's take a look at um, Jason's account to see what it looks like. So, if you look at this now, it's, it's already told us that maximum number of days between password change is 60. And then also, Jason must change his password at the next login. So we have satisfied that requirement for Jason. So now let's do it for the rest of the people. And a question like this on most exams will probably you have to do it four times, so you will probably carry about four points. So on the Red Hat exam, this will carry about eight points. So um, let's do this for the rest of, them, of our users. users that you now look at will have the same setting, which means that they must change their password at the next most password must be changed. So we satisfy that requirement and maximum number of days between password change we also satisfied that requirement. So we have finished that question number two for LinuxJumper.com. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back and uh, see the rest of the questions and prepare yourself for Red Hat Certified System Administrator's exam. Also, you get the job. These are the kinds of questions you can expect uh, interviewers to ask you. Um, thank you very much for watching. Again, this is LinuxJobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean B. Joseph. And my email is showpopulous at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.